4.6. What's going on, huh? I will stop the test because something is not right. The idea is to complete the warm-up, which will be very soon. So the warm-up is at 60% of my FTP. The FTP is uh, presumed to be at 265 watts at the moment. And so the warm-up is done at 60% of that, which is 160 watts. We'll check the lactate at the end of the warm-up. And then we'll be increasing the load by 5%. So we'll be going 65, 70, 75 and so on until uh, I see that I have reached the first inflection point and then I will eventually build to my FTP power just to make sure that I had really reached the LT1 so that I have the clear crossing of the inflection point. Wow! 2.7 So I had a generous breakfast just before the workout so that could be the consequence but we'll see how it progresses so that was uh, 170 watt, um, which is approximately 65% of my FTP, and the lactate is 3.0, which is very strange. Well, 3.2, that's getting interesting. That is really getting interesting. Where is my blood? I don't see enough blood now. What's going on? Right, so, still 3.2. This is still stretch. 4.6 What's going on, huh? I will stop the test because something is not right. So there is one very important precaution that I would like to share with you guys if you use the lactate meters to control your intensity. Uh, obviously there are a number of ways to control the intensity, the heart rate, power or perceived effort, but without doubt the lactate meters are the most precise tools uh, if you wish to exactly stay within your uh, intended intensity. And so the thing to remember is, as you have seen, or you will see just in a moment, uh, at uh, my morning cycling session when I was trying to find out the LT1, I had a high carbs meal prior to the workout which uh, destroyed the lactate readings and the lactate readings were all over the place and as such this information has no value in determining the threshold uh, values. And so uh, I used uh, Super Sapiens in past to monitor my glucose levels and I will post a photograph somewhere here. So uh, I know that after a high carbs meal my metabolic state would uh, remain unstable up to 4 hours. And so if you wish to get to your true lactate levels, then you need to uh, perform the testing in a fasted state, or at least if uh, four hours elapsed uh, after you last uh, high carbs meal. And so uh, the next session I will do tomorrow in the morning in a fast state. Uh, I will do exactly the same session. Okay, so same protocol for testing, with the only difference uh, that uh, this will be in fasted state. And uh, 10 minutes warm-up is uh, going to be complete within the next two minutes. So that's a good time to prepare the lactate meter. That's 2.4, which is strange again. So, the only explanation which I have now is that the heat which is in the garage could be the cause to the elevated lactate levels. Two point seven. It's only getting worse, so Right, so it's uh, hot in the garage. It's around 27 degrees here, Celsius. And uh, the next logical step would be to go for a run. 
after the training session and we could check the lactate levels during the run as the outside temperature is cooler it's around 18 and 20 celsius which is a significant difference and uh, to indeed make sure that uh, these elevated lactate levels is the result of the heat so we'll see the the truth now 3.0 so it keeps increasing so if this turns out to be the truth then and uh, the heat is indeed so significantly elevates the lactate levels then uh, there's no big point to train in the heat if you are targeting the LT1 and uh, aiming for the maximum fat oxidation rates as uh, obviously the body is shifting to the glycogen as fuel much much sooner but we'll see seven. now it had decided to go down a bit which is interesting so 3.1 Right, so that was a uh, 4.30 average pace and uh, heart rate around 135 and so with the significantly cooler weather conditions I hope to finally get a decent reading Right, so this now appears to be uh, correct and in line with the, with the conditions, effort, heart rate and everything else. So, 1.1. Right, so as it turns out there are two precautions you need to take into account if you wish to use the lactate meter and uh, seriously rely on its uh, values. As the first was the uh, high carbs meal, you can take it uh, prior to the, to the exercise then it may affect the lactate levels and uh, the difference was not so significant as I was expecting it to be and then uh, the next uh, precaution is the hit. The cycling session was in the garage without uh, AC and the temperature there was 27 degrees and uh, it affected uh, significantly, uh, so significantly actually the lactate values that those cannot be used if you are looking for the uh, threshold tests. To make sure that uh, uh, this was the hit, I then uh, continued on to the run uh, outside uh, which was at 19 degrees celsius and uh, the lactate level was uh, significantly lower so 1.1 at a pace of uh, 429 average which is just uh, in the middle of my zone 2 and the lactate level was uh, 1.1 so uh, yes uh, be careful then if you use the lactate meter for the uh, lactate threshold uh, determination then uh, you have to take into account the high carbs meal and uh, the heat, which will significantly affect your results. Thank you.